Welcome to a special edition of Insight. We have the opportunity today to speak with a gentleman who has written a book. It took him all of 12 years, he tells us, <laughs> but here we have it. He is P.J. Patterson. Name of the book, My Political Journey. He happens to be Jamaica's sixth prime minister, and um, he went to a certain school that I'm well aware of, Calabar, and I would imagine it would mean that he has some gold medals because he still has some records when it comes politically. But let's find out what's the content of this book, what's about, and get an insight, if you may, into who this man is. One of the things I found, though, is that his political life, listen for this bombshell, started an initiation at about eight years old. <laughs> eight years old. You were ready to go, Mr. Patterson. Tell us about that. What caused that? What was that about? When I went to school at Somerton in St. James, we had a headmaster who believed in preparing his students for life. In 1944, elections were being held in December, the first time under universal adult suffrage. And he thought it was a wonderful idea for us as students to have an election in the school. And somehow or the other, whether I volunteered or I was chosen, I ended up as being one of the candidates. And by a quirk of history, my campaign manager on that occasion was my schoolmate, who was a class above me then, Violet Nielsen, okay, who later became <laughs> the Deputy. member of parliament yeah. for East Central St. James, James and Speaker of the House of Representatives. That's correct. It was a very exciting uh, election contest. And there was a young fellow who ran against me, Vinton Gray. And we had to campaign within the school to get support, setting out why we were asking our fellow students to vote for us. I didn't realize then, but it turned out to be that was my first campaign. <laughs> but I must ask you though, sir, were you PNP then? <laughs> I was, what, what I was chosen to be the PNP representative. <laughs> they got you then. early. <laughs> they got me early. <laughs> and uh, the gentleman, was Mr. Gray, was JLP, was that? He ran for the JLP, but in that particular constituency, I think there were about nine candidates, okay. in, uh, including uh, Lowe from Adelphi, who had been a former member of the Legislative Council. So we weren't really running along party lines yes. as we know them today. Yes. We were just um, setting out good reasons why, why we thought students should yes. vote And you talk uh, about for um, us. You know, I see Pep is now trying to get critical thinking, but that was a long time. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> um, who won? I happened to win. Okay. <laughs> there you <laughs> Which go. Which was a good start. Yes, there you go. But your start didn't start there. That, this is St. James, but you're a Hanoverian. I ended up going to school in St. James, although I come from Hanover because my mother who was a teacher insisted that I was not going to be attending the same school where she taught for a very simple reason. She thought either I was going to be spoilt yes. because I was a teacher's child or that she couldn't enforce proper discipline in the school without the risk of students taking it out on me because she happened to be my mother. So I was dispatched to Somerton where my aunt was the postmistress okay. and I lived uh, with her. I was under her care and her tutelage um, for all my period in uh, primary school at Somerton. Somerton was one of the 
first schools founded, I think it dated back to 1847, came into being soon after the abolition Absolutely. of uh, slavery. When I say soon, um, it was quite a few yes, years yes. after, but in terms of opening educational opportunity, even at the primary level, it was regarded as something, uh, Somerton was a pioneering school. And it turned out that the old school had been demolished. And when I went to the, the new school, it was a building, uh, I think, one year old. So you had to do a transition. Yes. It wasn't the only transition in your life. It because certainly Because you went to Calabar, Studley Park, and then you had to come up to Red Hills Road. Correctly so. So again, you were <laughs> yes. involved with a transition. Yes. I went into Calabar on the 5th of January, 1948. Simon Clark, who was in the same form with me, keeps on saying that the most memorable thing was that it happened to be his birthday <laughs> <laughs> so i've never been allowed to <laughs> forget that birthday. and um i had one of what was then one of the few scholarships available yes. in jamaica this scholarship was uh the purcell scholarship that had been awarded out of funds made available by a Baptist lady mm -hmm. for uh, young students mm -hmm. and to win the scholarship I not only had to do a written test but I was interviewed by the headmaster himself Reverend David Davis and I think the interview lasted all of one hour and when I left I had no idea whether I had won the <laughs> scholarship <laughs> or not uh, but I subsequently heard that I had won, and I think 18 of us entered Calabar on that day, and the 12 brightest among us were assigned to second form. They had to create a special space mm -hmm. um, for us between 5A and 5B, and those who hadn't done so well, surprisingly enough, were placed in third form but we caught up with them and passed them <laughs> okay. later on okay. and the reason why, why we were given this special treatment is that although we all had a sound elementary mm -hmm. educational background we didn't know latin we didn't know spanish we didn't know algebra we didn't know geometry so the oh, cream okay. of the crop, so to speak, was selected for this very special uh, training. Among the members of staff then were Roddy Robinson, who had just won the Jamaican scholarship and was waiting to go to Oxford. Neville Dawes, who had uh, left JC and was about to go to Oriel yes. in Oxford, and Hector Winter. Ah. who had come from Woolmers, who had won the Rhodes Scholarship and was about to embark for studies at Oxford. At that time, the school year began in January yes. and Calendar ended year. in December. Yes. But the universities opened in October, so there was a Some gap, gap. Yes. between the time you finished secondary school and you were able to take up admission to universities. Of Calabar, you said it was spawned to deal with the issue of slavery, to, to help people to think creatively. Oh, from whence did that come? Uh, the Baptists were very active in the abolition movement. Yes. And they were very concerned as missionaries that persons coming from a background where they were descendants of slavery were not able to access opportunity for secondary education. And they started off with the idea that sons of Baptist ministers mm. would constitute 
the nucleus for the start of the school. It soon expanded to include uh, the Methodists and the Presbyterians, so that people like the Sherlock brothers, uh, Philip yes, and Hugh yes. Sherlock, came in on that basis. It was really a school that was intended to provide for boys who came from less privileged circumstances to give them what was regarded as a training for whatever positions they would take up in life, whether at home or abroad, and to do so within the principles of uh, Christian beliefs. You move Calabar, UWI, you, you, you were so proud of UWI, that even yes. proceeds of well, this book. <laughs> in between uh, 1948, when I, between 1953, mm -hmm. when I left Calabar and I entered the university in 1954, I actually taught at Cornwall College yes. for two terms in mm -hmm. Spanish and in English. And many of my uh, young students then um, have really become very, very prominent persons. Uh, that would include um, uh, Mr. Bailey, who was the head of the J Jamaica Civil Service Association. Yes, 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 I know. That would yes. include the chair Carl in... Blight. Okay. Yes. That would include Ken Ball, Dr. who Ken was Ball, in, yes. in, in uh, third form at that time. And that would include none other than one of our best theologians, Reverend Burchell Taylor, yes. who uh, came from uh, nearby Sandy Bay. Among the students then was Terry Gillette, yes. who was in fifth form. Yes. And, Mary Mary. and he has said that I nearly got him expelled from school. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Yes. I, I was walking across the lawn of Cornwall College during class time yes. and not in uniform. And he didn't realize I was a teacher. And he sprinted out of his class to chastise this young student who didn't know better for breaking all the school rules. <laughs> and just as he was about to lay hands on me, uh, a prefect uh, and the head of the cadet corps, who knew much better, shouted out at him, Gillette, Gillette. That's a master. <laughs> and and he froze <laughs> and retreated. I'm going to ask you to freeze a little bit as we take a break. From Insight, we'll be right back.